This is basically a curated swamp that connects uh, Bangkok's Benja Kitty Park. Go this way. Yeah. Connects Benja uh, Kitty Park with uh, uh, Lumpini Park. And it's, it's a beautiful place. This is a perfect example about what I'm intending to do with videos going forward. You see, there's probably 10,000 videos about this little curated swamp connecting the two parks together. And I'm here tonight. Well, it ties in with my fitness plans as well because, you know, it's, it's an exercise walk, although we're kind of walking rather leisurely. But I'm here with my friend Nicholas. <coughs> who is uh, one of my yoga students. That's how we met through, uh, through our shared uh, yoga practices. And, um, and he's become a friend. He's become a good friend. And he's, uh, he's a real bon vivant. Is that a good word for you? Yeah, it is. He started you, French. Yeah, started you French. see, because uh, Nicholas is French. He, he teaches in a, uh, in, in a high-end uh, uh, prestigious French school here in Bangkok. And he's... Uh, He's been here for many, many years. How long have you been here? Seven years. Seven years in Bangkok. And he's just an interesting guy, you know? So it's like, this is the type of stuff that I want to do with my videos going forward. You know, highlighting people and places that um, are kind of connected to my yoga practice and, my, uh, and the people around the world that I know. Say something in French. We Americans love French and most of my... Audience of French. Um, or, uh, like je m'appelle Nicolas et je suis français. Uh -huh. So there, you know. Um, and I, I just like French accents. But uh, so yeah, we were just talking about you, you're starting to question your your commitment to staying in Asia. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's. Asia is kind of fascinating, it's kind of a cliche, but uh, I really felt it like growing over the years. I've, I've been discovering that I liked Bangkok, I liked, uh, I liked myself in Bangkok, I liked the, the guy I was becoming in Bangkok. But uh, there's also a, a, little, a little part of, of, of Asia that can be deceiving. You can believe yourself to be somebody, you can believe Asia to be something and uh, in the end it's not. So I need to be cautious, that's what I was telling to you. And uh, yeah, it's, my, it's the beginning of my questioning. Just, just be cautious, basically. <laughs> you know, I've had the same conversation with myself at times. You know, I've been in Asia for 13 years now. I've lived in Singapore and uh, Vietnam and now Bangkok. I even spent a brief time in the Philippines where I'll be visiting soon. Um, and I often get to a place where is it time for me to go back to the States? And I always come up, no, I kind of like it here. <laughs> you know, it's, like just, yeah. it's not that I dislike the States. I think the United States is a wonderful place. You know, I'm really grateful that I was born there. If only for the uh, prosperity that I've, uh, that I've enjoyed in my lifetime because I have that American passport. Uh, but yeah, I, I sometimes have that same kind of emotional uh, give and take, you know, is it time to go back to the country of my roots? Actually, I, I have a friend that, that was visiting, he, he spent 12 years, no, 15 years in Bangkok, and uh, he just decided last summer to go back in France. Oh, yeah? And uh, he, first vacations that he had, he went straight back to Thailand. He, he just finished 15 days in Thailand and he was at my place last night just waiting for uh, his flight. And he told me something that I, I found unbelievable. He told me, I left Asia because I, I started to uh, see that I was stressed out and I had a lot of fears about uh, Thailand because the state basically doesn't give a shit uh, about me, about my security, and it started to feel good again in France, where the uh, how, do, how do you call that a welfare state is uh, is prevalent. So he just say that to me, and I was flabbergasted. I was like, oh, what'd you say? 
you had fears in Thailand. You, 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 and he was the, the, the most adventurous guy that you can imagine. Uh, he was always on the run, always on the night bus to some island somewhere. <laughs> and um, I was so surprised that underneath all that, he had discovered that uh, there was something stressful about his life in Asia. And uh, yeah, that's, that's part of the, the questioning I get, I guess. The, <laughs> there's something going on underneath your adventures in Asian life. Well, it's, uh, you know, that's a very interesting thing to think about as you were saying that. What's running through my mind is how I like being, you know, an independent, adventurous guy, not reliant on governments of any kind. Yes, that's exactly what I say to him. But, <laughs> but, there's a big but for me. A big one, yeah. You know, 70% of my income comes from government pensions <laughs> in yeah. the United States. Yeah, that's what, so that's it's what easy I'm talking for, about. Yeah. Be cautious. Where, where does the money come from? Yeah. How do you really feel? Yeah, don't be, don't be a slave to an illusion. Yes, exactly. Yes, I like that. And the more you, you, you the more you go into the nitty gritty of the reality, the more you can stay long in Asia because you, you pay attention to all the things that all the uh, deluded guys don't want to pay attention to. Yes, you pay your stay with real, uh, realism. These are the kind of people that I've met through my yoga practice around the world. And I thought this was gonna be a very brief conversation. I now have to rejigger this whole video that I've been shooting all afternoon. But yeah, that's basically the idea behind my upcoming videos. To, I know people around the world from my yoga business. I'm getting back in top shape, whatever that looks like for an old guy like me. And uh, I'm going to make that the foundation of conversations with the people that I know around the world. Uh, people like Nicholas. Thank you, Nicholas.